In this video we're going to talk about the composition of trigonometric functions. We're going to go through a quick explanation and then do some examples. So here are some compositions of trigonometric functions. So you always want to keep in mind that we're going to work from the inside of our function and then work our way out. So if we have the sine of sine inverse of x, that's going to equal x for all x in the domain of sine inverse. And that holds true for cosine and tangent. And basically what this means is that the domain of the composition is limited by the inside function. Then we have a couple of special cases. So if we have sine inverse of sine of x, then that's going to equal x for all x in the range of the sine inverse. So on the previous screen we had the domain of the sine inverse when the inverse is on the inside of the composition. And when the inverse is on the outside of the composition, we need to make sure that we're considering the range. And again, this holds true for cosine inverse and tan inverse. So basically, the domain of f of x is the range of f inverse of x, and we can develop these special cases. And all of this will kind of make more sense once we do some examples. So let's look at our first two examples. We have sine of sine inverse of negative one-half. So again, the first thing that we want to do is we want to look at what's on the inside and we want to solve that first. So the first thing that we need to look at is sine inverse of negative one-half. And if you recall from the inverse of trigonometric function video, I can rewrite this as sine theta equal to negative one-half. So we're looking for the angle that's going to give us the sine equal to negative one-half. So again, I'm going to go to my unit circle. And remember that the sine is my y value. So I'm looking for a y value that is negative 1 half. So here's a y value of negative 1 half. And here's a y value of negative 1 half. But again, as we did in the previous video for the inverse of trigonometric functions, we need to look at the range of our sine inverse, which we said went from pi over 2 around to negative pi over 2. So that's going to eliminate this option because it's not in the range of sine inverse and that's going to give us our answer of 11 pi over 6. So here we have 11 pi over 6. So now that I know what the inside of my function equals I can rewrite it again, sine of 11 pi over 6. So going back to my completed unit circle, now I want to know what is the sine of 11 pi over 6, and that gives me that negative 1 half back. So my final answer is negative 1 half, and that's because of this composition of trigonometric functions. We had the sine of a sine inverse of x, and it equaled x because the x was in the domain of sine inverse. Looking at this next example, we have the tangent of cosine inverse of negative root 2 over 2. So again, the first thing that we need to do is we need to solve for the inside of our function. So we're looking for that angle that's going to give us a negative root 2 over 2. So going back to my unit circle, we're looking for the angle that's going to give us negative root 2 over 2, and cosine is our x value. So we're looking for an x value that's negative root 2 over 2, and that happens at both of those locations. However, again, keeping in mind the range of cosine was from 0 to pi. So again, that's going to eliminate this answer, and we're going to be left with just 3 pi over 4. So now we have what's on the inside. I can fill that in. I get the tangent of 
3 pi over 4. So now I need to know what is the tangent of 3 pi over 4. And I don't really have these memorized, so I'm going to use my identity that tangent equals sine over cosine. So I'm looking for the sine of 3 pi over 4 and the cosine of 3 pi over 4. Going back to my completed unit circle, that is negative root 2 and positive root 2. So the sine is positive root 2 over 2, and the cosine is negative root 2 over 2, and that's going to simplify and give me a negative 1 as my final answer. All right, looking at these next two examples, now my inverse is on the outside. So our first example is tan inverse of tangent of pi over 3. So again, we need to look at what's inside of the composition first. So what is the tangent of pi over 3? Again, I'm going to find this by using that identity sine over cosine. Going back to my unit circle, we're looking at pi over 3. So my cosine is 1 half and my sine is root 3 over 2. So I have root 3 over 2 divided by 1 half. That's going to simplify to root 3. So now I have the tan inverse of root 3. So as we talked about in the inverse of trigonometric function video, this is basically undoing that trigonometric function. So I want to know what angle is going to give me root 3. Well, if you look above, that angle that gives me root 3 is pi over 3. So again, if you look back, because we had tangent inverse of tangent, we're looking at one of these special cases, tan inverse of tangent of x equals x for all x in the range of tan inverse. So because pi over 3 is in the range of tan inverse, that's why our angle gave us pi over 3 back. But when we have problems like this next one, tan inverse of sine of negative 2 pi over 3, these are not the same thing, so we can't just necessarily say, oh, we're going to get negative 2 pi over 3 back, because these are two completely different functions. So again, we need to start with what's on the inside. So I need to know what is the sine of negative 2 pi over 3. So 2 pi over 3 is right here, but I need to go in the negative direction. So if I travel in the negative direction, 2 pi over 3, that gets me 4 pi over 3. And we're looking for the sine. So the sine at 4 pi over 3 is negative root 3 over 2. negative root 3 over 2. So now I have what is the tan inverse of negative root 3 over 2. So if you're kind of getting familiar with the unit circle, a tangent value of negative root 3 over 2 is nowhere on our unit circle. So we're actually going to need to use our calculator for this. Okay, so pulling up my calculator. I have tan inverse, so second tangent, that gets me my tan inverse of negative root 3 divided by 2, enter, and that gets me negative 40.9. Again, always confirm, go into mode, and make sure that you're in degree 
mode. That's what we're looking for. We're looking for a theta in a degree mode. So I am in fact in degree mode, so that confirms that this answer is correct. Negative 40.9. nine degrees. Looking at our last example, here we clearly don't have anything that I'm going to be able to find on my unit circle. So I'm going to have to approach this problem in a completely different way, but I still need to start from the inside. So on the inside I have cosine inverse of x over square root x squared plus 9. Again, I can rewrite that as cosine theta equals x over square root x squared plus 9. So this kind of looks like one of the trig functions that we were solving way at the beginning to where I can use SOHCAHTOA. So my cosine of my angle equals my adjacent over my hypotenuse. So now I can draw my right triangle, label this angle theta, my adjacent is x, and my hypotenuse is x squared plus 9. So this is my side opposite, and I need to figure out what that equals. All right, so here we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem. My side adjacent squared plus my side opposite squared equals my hypotenuse squared. So my side adjacent is x squared. My side opposite is what we're trying to figure out. And then my hypotenuse is the square root of x squared plus 9 squared. So then I have x squared plus my side opposite squared. And when I have the square root squared, that's going to leave me with just what's on the inside. Moving this x squared over, and those are going to cancel. I get my side opposite squared equals 9. So my side opposite equals 3. So now that we have all the information for my right triangle, I'm looking for the cotangent of this triangle. So what is the cotangent of this angle theta? Well, if you remember, the cotangent is the reciprocal to tangent, so it's adjacent over opposite. So theta equals adjacent, which is x, over opposite, which is 3. So that's really all you need to know about the composition of trigonometric functions. Always keep in mind that you want to start from the inside and work your way out.